Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone I hope you're all well I hope you're all in the best of health and iman inshallah I'm trying to vlog but the wind keeps getting in my face and blowing my naqab to the side and I hope you're all well I hope you're all in the best of health and iman inshallah I'm trying to do a vlog but honestly I don't know how some of these people do a vlog or film in public um, Alhamdulillah Compass is dead now so I can do public filming because no one is around and I can shout and scream but not too loud because whenever I walk past someone I'm gonna have to be quiet it's been one whole month since I have uploaded anything and that's literally because I've been doing my dissertation studying and working and it has drained my creativity so much to the point where I don't feel like uploading anything and then I get anxious because I haven't uploaded anything so then I just rush and upload something and then it ends up not being good so my aim is to just find a balance inshallah get back into my routine and then yeah once I do that see yeah whenever I go a bit quiet it's because someone is behind me or someone is in front of me but people are staring at me because <laughs> we have a lot of tourists on campus now because what happens to the university is it gets um, once everyone's gone it becomes a, a hotel for tourists I'm on my way to the library now to do my dissertation um, thing literature review <laughs> and then we shall see basically look how green my campus is so down there if you just follow that path that's the mosque I'm showing you everything I'm trying to talk and walk and I'm basically running out of breath oh these are new we didn't have these here before oh that's a nice photo right there Universities tend to be quite diverse places. University of Kent is actually in, in Canterbury. Canterbury itself is not diverse, but the uni is. Once all the students go back, it's not that diverse in town. It's just when the students are here that it's really diverse. But this is the library. It costs so much and like, it just costs so much money for this library. Where am I going? Okay, let's um, let's talk. Hiccup, burp. I had two Kinder Buenos, so I'm really, really hyper. Actually, they haven't sunk in yet, so I don't know how I'm hyper yet. Okay. I've already wasted three minutes and 41 seconds, and I only have 15 minutes to record. So, my hands are hurting me already. Let's sit down. Basically, let me check no one's around me. Basically, let me catch my breath. <laughs> okay, bismillah. I still haven't caught my breath. <laughs> I'm just trying to recover my energy. Okay, today, yeah, I wanted to talk about how to respond to people that tell you you've changed just because you've become more practicing. And it's not the type of you've changed that's positive. Positive, it's a type of change that's negative. It's the type of you've changed that makes you feel like, oh my God, like I don't even recognize myself anymore. So I wanted to talk about how to deal with the people and the, the family. It tends to be family and friends and how to deal with their responses when you start practicing Islam. For girls, typically, it's when you decide to wear the hijab. If your family doesn't agree, there is a lot of backlash. For example, you get comments like, oh, you think you're self-righteous. Is the niqab fard? Um, is the hijab fard? Um, are you sure you're going to have less opportunities in life? It's very demotivating things. So then... So then you can take off the hijab because if you start wearing the hijab in your teens a lot of people like your family members your uncles and your aunts and your dad and mum think that it is a phase once they realize that wearing the hijab is not a phase it will be so tough for you the tests i feel like the tests that come with wearing the hijab and all of that from your family and friends specifically is to put you to the tests because once you deal with that test strangers and people outside what they say about you won't matter because you've dealt with those who are close to you and it is the most painful thing when people around you, the close ones, don't support your actions, especially when they're Muslim themselves. For me, the most comments I would get is, you think you're self-righteous, you think you're pious, since when we were sheikh, um, oh, you think you're perfect, you've been brainwashed. I've actually had two people tell me that I've been brainwashed. And let me just tell you, sisters, one of the first things when I was 17 and I decided to wear that hijab, my character was very indecisive very shy i would i was very influenced i would apologize a lot when i finally made the decision to wear the hijab on my 17th birthday for some reason that was the strongest decision i made and it was the most confident decision i made and when when i finally took that decision it shocked a lot of people in my family 
because I wasn't taking no. I was gonna wear that hijab because I said to myself, if I don't wear the hijab when I'm 17, I'm never gonna wear it for the rest of my life because shaitan's waswasa is always gonna tell me, tomorrow wear it, tomorrow wear it, just wear it next year, wear it when you're 19, wear it when you're married. A lot, one of my uh, family members said to me, wear the hijab when you're married, when you're when, with your husband. But the reason why I, um, I said no, I said no because if I wore the hijab when I was married, they would say that my husband brainwashed me so I was like if I wear the hijab I need to wear it today because I'm not promised tomorrow I don't want people to say that my husband brainwashed me and I don't want anyone to and I, I don't know what could happen to me so basically I didn't want shaitan's waswasa to keep getting to me I was like if I don't make this decision for myself let me check those behind me I'm gonna be the most indecisive person for the rest of my life so when I finally chose to wear the hijab it was the most freeing, liberating, confident decision I ever took in my life and wallahi I did not regret that at all I didn't regret it at all I weighed the pros and cons for so many years before that and when I finally took that decision it was based on because before before wearing the hijab I actually thought it was sunnah I didn't I didn't even know the time sunnah existed I just I just thought I just thought that you could wear the hijab if you wanted to and there's no sin if you don't if you choose not to wear the hijab as well Once I learned that the hijab is fard, I was shocked I was like I'm actually committing sins every day I walk outside that door and I need to wear the hijab It's not a joke even if it is a hijab that is not the correct I need to make that step Inshallah, honestly, this is the first tip that advice I would recommend to you is find out the correct hijab and try to wear that as soon as you can Because once you wear the hijab, you don't want to also be collecting sins for wearing the hijab in the in a incorrect way so try to always wear the hijab in the correct way and try to make an intention to and try to always um, make the intention to correct something about your hijab every single day the main thing is that you are striving to improve yourself every day anyway comments from your family and friends they tend to be the ones that hurt the most because you didn't expect it from these people these people are supposed to be supporting you they're supposed to be understanding of your behavior they're supposed to so basically have your back the only person who had my back was my mom so there was basically my mom had to deal with a lot of that stares a lot of um, comments alhamdulillah my mom literally had my back when i wore the hijab um she was supporting me she took me to school she took care of me and all of that jazz in terms for the other people not so much it was more of an embarrassment it was a lot of people also think, a lot of family members and cultures also think that the jilbab, especially the Arab culture, Egyptians and Algerians, not all of them, not the practicing, the practicing ones, they don't think like that, but the non-practicing ones do, that the jilbab and the niqab lowers your um, economic status. It lowers your economic status and it makes you lesser and it gives you less opportunities in life and it's a simple, basically you don't put that much effort into getting ready. So that was one of the comments I got you chose the jilbab because it's easier to wear you don't have to prepare yourself You don't even take care of yourself anymore. That's not true at all Literally, we take care of ourselves just as much as everyone else One of the main reasons I like the jilbab is because it's simple It's minimal and it shows you that you actually don't need a lot in life. You don't need trial You don't need you don't need like, you know the full outfit the blazer the handbag the matching lipstick the matching shoes Life is simple, it's only we who have complicated it by following other traditions, by following other Western norms and, and values that really make life hard. Literally, they make life so hard for you. Life is easy, Islam has made it easy. If you follow it to the book and to the core, you will live a very, very, very peaceful life. But if you choose to follow other things and try to mix that with Islam, you will suffer, you will get tired, you'll get um, heartbroken, you'll get... I always say this to people, once you, str once you stem away from Islam, your heart will be broken because you're following the dunya. Shaitan uses the dunya to misguide you. I don't know why I'm walking around like I've got energy. Let me go sit back down. Guys, ignore this mess right here. But yeah, try to stick to the Quran, try to stick to the Sunnah, try to change something about yourself every day because wallahi, life is simple. Life is very simple, it's very minimal. And when you choose to adopt other traditions other uh, norms and values you will become you have an identity crisis there's a lot of muslim women out there who are trying to be feminists as well as practicing muslims and you'll see they have an identity crisis in the sense that their mindset has been polluted and they can't grasp certain things in islam or certain things that are in islam they try to say that's a feminist mindset so don't try to mix and match islam to suit your desires to suit your needs try to understand your thought patterns try to understand what's what you need to improve on 
because at the end of the day wallahi nothing is more beneficial to you than following the quran and sunnah following the commandment of allah and the problem with people when they do the, pro, the biggest problem we have like my sister um selma says on instagram your foundation because if your foundation is not strong in the sense of you don't know who allah is you don't know his power over you and you don't have the knowledge of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how can you possibly understand the wisdom behind his commandments like you can't say oh but i don't think that's logically correct how can you say it's not logically correct if it's coming from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's logic it's wisdom it's clear cut if you know who allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and you have a strong foundation you have no doubt in the religion you won't question the religion you won't say oh this is not logical oh uh, let me look for an alternative you will be happy and you'll be satisfied with the book of allah and his commandments over you because your foundation and your understanding of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is enough it is enough for you to know we hear and we obey that's literally the mindset you should have you should be striving for i'm even striving for that mindset because as a human being your the waswasa your 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 nature to want to understand things to question things to doubt things you're allowed to question things if it's not questioning allah you're allowed to question things to gain knowledge but you're not allowed to question allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and why he chose a commandment for you you're not allowed to say oh hold on a minute i think that my um empowerment comes from striving to be equal to a man or i feel like my empowerment comes from being nude oh one thing that really annoys me is when muslim women say nudity empowers some and the hijab empowers some nudity does not empower anyone allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, cover yourselves tell the believing muslim women to cover themselves how are you then coming and telling me nudity empowers some so when the people come to you and they say you've changed you tell them i have changed i'm bettering myself and i'm bettering my connection with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't ever ever feel down don't ever feel sad don't ever feel hurt because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by your side and would you rather obey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or would you rather obey a hundred other gods and not literal gods you're obeying your work you're obeying your boss you're obeying your friendship circle you're obeying what society says you're obeying beauty standards you're obeying um your addictions your desires you're obeying your literally some people have given up their life for addictions for cocaine for drugs for alcohol that is a form of worship would you rather worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has decreed so many beneficial things for yourself and it all comes from lack of understanding who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is would you rather worship him or would you rather worship all these other gods it's as simple as that a lot of people think that i can worship allah and also follow my desires follow some other feminist ideology i can't think of any ideologies off my head right now i would rather um you know wear the hijab according to what i think is correct or what i like or what i deem it fit to be literally i don't know how this video ends up this topic but all i want to say is we hear and we obey try to strive for that mentality because once you have that mentality you're sorted for life you're peaceful once you understand that your risk and all of this comes from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will not need to be chasing these people you will not to need to be pleasing anyone you will literally be so at peace so at peace and i think even myself i'm trying to come to that mentality where i hear and i obey and it's, it's a very hard mentality to have